Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This is your brother, Kifah Mustafa. I am an Imam and Associate Director at the Mask Foundation in Bridgeview, Illinois. And my topic for you today is about making masajid welcoming for converts, insha'Allah ta'ala. This is a topic I believe that has to start with our understanding of what is a masjid. We know from the tradition of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that masajid are the most beloved places on earth to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And whoever Allah entrusted in caring for this masajid, being imams or board members or presidents, people who uh, spend their life and dedicated their effort to build this masajid up. This is an amana that they need to maintain it and sustain it in a way that it will be open for everyone, providing services to all types of community members, including in this particular topic we're talking about today, the converts or the reverts as they call them. This is the place where Allah described the role of the masjid the name of Allah is to be praised in this place. And this is the place where people are to be in the business of tasbih. So people who are going to come to the masjid, they are going to engage in the most honorable relationship between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is praising Him. For converts in particular, it is not just about what comes after that of tasbih, but it is that first moment when they declare that shahada. Um, I'm not a convert as far as, you know, someone who was not a Muslim and then accepted Islam. We grew up in a Muslim family. I can never imagine or think how would it feels for someone taking, taking their shahada for the first time. If it was in the Imam's office or if it was in front of the people at Salah. But from what I have witnessed, and in our masjid we have an average between 20 to 30 people every year who take their shahada in the masjid. I have seen people crying. I have seen people very emotional. I have seen people who spoke very strong, people who were kind of shaking, all types of uh, feelings and emotions that you can think of. And if it was anything that is huge in my life, it's about my faith, it's about my identity, it's about my past and my future. This is the moment, this is the place where I started as a Muslim. So I still believe that there is a special connection for every convert who took his shahada or her shahada in the masjid, that this place is not just the place of a worship toward Allah or praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It is where they started. It is where they became whom they wanted to be. It is the amana, it is the trust for the people who are caring for these places to make it as much welcoming, as much comforting, as much available for their needs on all levels. And only then we would be doing our job properly as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ مِنَ الْعَبْدِ إِذَا عَمِلَ عَمَلًا أَنْ يُتْقِنَهُ that we need to do things for Allah, love it. When we do things, we do it in perfection. And in Allah ya'muru bil adli wal ihsan. Allah orders us to be just and to be people of excellence, something beyond just what is fair and what is proper and what is just. So we need to go beyond of what we expect as this is enough. And when we're talking about that, also we're talking about a place that after these brothers and sisters who embrace Islam, take their shahada. We're talking about a place where they are going to learn their salah. Salah is the most honorable pillar of Islam after shahada. It is the relationship between the servant and Allah. It is the spiritual moment that everyone wants to engage. And someone who was raised as a Muslim, praying for the past 20, 30 years or so, versus someone who is embracing Islam for the first time, I, I think they have this presence, they have this humility, khushu'a, that they are giving it the best they can to perfect it, that probably sometimes we wish we can match them in that. And for that, the masjid 
is a place for them to see themselves elevating spiritually, growing up to be true Muslims in their faith. So now when we are talking about what is that we can do for them, I think the effort should be put prior to people converting to Islam. Imams in specific should be ready to be able to make sense to those people who are brought to the masjid by friends, by family members, or those who are coming as students. You know, every masjid have their own uh, programs that host people for uh, various, you know, uh, explanatory projects or programs about Islam. So the Imam has to be ready to speak the language that uh, brings some sort of an attention toward the heart and the mind of those people who are coming. Many people bring their families. They are married to non-Muslims and uh, they will be interested from that of a relationship on, on a family level. Uh, some people bring their friends from school. Uh, some people bring their colleagues at work. So there should be some sessions given prior to that because these people sometimes come kind of ready and they need that click. They need that final you know, moment that if they hear it from the Imam, from the Sheikh, it makes all the sense for them. He connects all the dots and it makes the person willing to commit right on the spot or something like that. So every Imam should be ready to be able to talk sense and talk relatively points that make them interested in, in that commitment. Another point is that we should have sessions ready for people who are coming to learn about Islam if they were taking comparative religion classes, world religion classes or things like that. Do we have a ready uh, state of the art I may say? PowerPoints, information that is authentic, that makes sense, simple, not complicated, and we should not be in the business of bashing others. I don't believe that when people come to learn about Islam, we should compare Islam to Christianity or we should compare Islam to Judaism or anything out there. <clears throat> I believe that we just, we need to speak about Islam what it is and what it stands for and let people make the choice. Allah said it very clearly. لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَالْيَدِينَ You have your religion, I have mine. My job is to speak of what and who I am and let the people make the choice. Now, when people embrace Islam and commit to Islam, I believe there has to be some sort of a committee ready for them to host them, uh, befriend them, uh, see what type of services they need. So some of these Muslims who convert to Islam, they already have family members who can take care of them or friends at work that they meet them on a daily basis. So when you teach them Salah, they're going to practice with family, they're going to practice with friends. There should be, you know, not enough much probably uh, effort put uh, with them. But there are those people who don't have much people around them. And for that, it is enough for a reason to be a, uh, ready for some sort of a committee that will welcome these people, host them, befriend them, hang out with them, uh, keep them in touch, uh, bring them to the masjid if they don't have uh, access to transportation, uh, make a relationship. Because at the end, if they don't see themselves part of the community with being friends, uh, people that they know that they love, they will not hold on for a long time. <clears throat> we can talk also about programs special for them in relation to language if it was English or Spanish, or programs that in relation to this 101 series about basics in Islam. And we can benefit a lot from big names that have done so much great job. I can just mention, Allah khair, Dr. Jamal Badawi. He has beautiful series that was ready from the 80s. And a lot of people who converted to Islam speak about how much simple and easy approach was made by him Jazallah khair, we can have these ready to be given as gifts, CDs, or sometimes booklets or books that can help people learn, or programs that are made specific to reach out for them, to tackle their social issues, their spiritual issues, their financial issues, and the masjid, yes, need to be ready on all these levels. If we can help them even financially for those who need the financial help, 
if we need to help them socially, find them, you know, spouses, w this is something that we need to look into the, uh, that, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, let me finish with two points. <coughs> the first one, and this is a question that was told to me by uh, four or five converts in one of the sessions talking about making masajid uh, open for da'wah. They said that when they converted 20, 25 years ago, it was take it all and act on it all the time, which made some sort of a challenge for them. What they were saying, and they are converts and practicing for the past 20 some years, that probably we need to take it easy on these people, that if people are having a hard time to quit sins that they are been already in and declared sins in Islam, just because they embrace Islam, it's not like they can drop everything of the past overnight and then, you know, uh, step out socially, step out mentally, step out from anything. So this phase of taking them from one point to another, helping them, uh, you know, let go of things that were of their, what we call, you know, past. This is the mission and the, uh, let me say, burden or uh, job of the imam, the people in the masjid to help them go smoothly without flipping over, uh, expecting from them that everything has to change overnight and they cannot maintain on it. The second point is that, <clears throat> is there things that we can benefit from them to give them their own space? Can they be part of this? And, and let me say that these committees must be made from converts themselves because they know their issues. But then, are they good in IT that they can help the masjid? Are they good in volunteering? Are they good in uh, probably speaking? They might be great speakers and they can learn Islam and, and be people that we can present to the community. So we need to utilize also their own expertise and their own areas of professionalism so we can have a complete package ready for them, inshallah ta'ala. At the end, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لَأَنْ يَهْدِ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِمَّا طَلَعَتْ عَلَيْهِ الشَّمْسِ If Allah to guide through you one person, it would be better than all that which sun did make, you know, or rise upon. This is an honorable task. This is bringing someone into لا إله إلا الله. This is something of opening a path and road to heaven. We should perfect our job into presenting the best that we can provide to converts in our communities. I pray and hope that all masajid, all communities will always bring new ideas, perfect that with which they are doing, and hopefully we'll have a good platform that we will be proud of as a Muslim community, for these are our brothers and sisters, inshallah. Zakumullah khair, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh.